Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Hi, my name is Terry Blevins with the Toolkit Tuesday Tip. In my very first Toolkit Tuesday Tip, I suggested two considerations for supporting digital enterprises. One is to make sure you see your role as enablers for the digital effort, and the other is to think about enterprise architecture as a set of architectural capabilities to be delivered to those in need through a service delivery model. In today's tip, I'll expand a bit on what it takes to deliver architecture capabilities through a service delivery model, recounting from an old open group blog I wrote a few years back titled Enterprise Architecture as a Service, How Reach for the Stars. In this blog, I highlighted five areas. One, resource with the right mix of people. Providing enterprise architecture services requires a broader mix of skill sets to address more than the IT architect role. Ensuring your people mix includes skills in customer relationship, risk, and project management, as well as in planning, contracting, requirements, understanding, negotiation, leadership, and influence is essential. Two, educate your architects in best practices in service delivery. Services delivered through best practices that are open enables an organization to train easily, hire selectively, and produce more consistently. The third area, apply the best-in-class tools proven to improve production capability. Utilizing a consistent set of best-in-class tools helps ensure that deliverables are consistent and it enables reuse, which can improve speed and quality of delivery. Tools that support the best open practices are even more valuable. Four, collaborate with partners to evolve the open practice. Collaboration on the best open practices provides an avenue to improve the best practices based on real experiences. It also improves your market perception and helps keep the bar raised for the industry. The fifth area, Hone your organization to deliver value quickly at a pace commensurate with the digital effort. Supporting the agile application of resources in short projects that have big impact will have big impact. In summary, to support digital transformations with an architecture service delivery model, reach, resource appropriately, educate in best practices, apply best in class tools, collaborate to improve the practices, and hone for quick delivery and success. For more information, please check out the TOGAF library. Keep architecting for enterprise value. Thanks for watching. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to today's Toolkit Tuesday. And I'll start by uh, giving a big thanks there to Terry Blevins of EnterpriseWise. LLC for his latest Terry's Toolkit Tuesday tip. Um, 
as he always ends everyone, keep architecting for enterprise value. It's what we all have to remember. So um, a quick few words before we move on um, with today's main agenda. And uh, the most important thing is to, uh, to again, repeat my welcome and to wish, uh, hope that you are well wherever you are um, and keeping safe. And we really appreciate you joining us today. We know there are uh, lots of ways you can spend your time, but I'm pretty sure that you'll get something out of this and you'll be glad you did. So thank you for joining us. Uh, one thing for those of you who are joining us live today, um, the way we would ask questions of our speakers today is through the Q&A channel. So uh, there are various channels on the WebEx tool, but if you uh, go to the, you'll see in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, there are three little dots. If you click on those, you'll see Q&A as one of the options. And that's how we would like you to um, ask questions of our speakers today, please. Uh, use the chat channel to talk amongst yourselves. Tell us where you're joining from. This is very much a global event. We have people from all over the world joining us today. So uh, do use the chat channel to let us know where you're joining from. It's always fun to see. And um, yeah, I hope we have a great session today and I'm sure we will. Our focus today is on Archimate, the Archimate modeling language. And uh, we'll, we'll hear more about it uh, very shortly from our two speakers today. But first, I want to acknowledge and thank um, the um, Van Haren Learning Solutions for their help in putting together this particular episode of Toolkit Tuesday. Um, so many thanks to the folks at Van Haren Learning Solutions. Today, as I say, we're focused on the Archimate modeling language, and we're going to hear about how it's used uh, in the real world, real life examples, and uh, two great speakers today joining us. Um, we have Patrick Dirty, who is Bion 9.0, Cobit 5, Togaf 9.2, and Archimate 3.1, and finally, Sophia 6 Certified Enterprise Architect. Uh, congratulations on all those certifications, Patrick. He's more than 20 years experience in the different domains of enterprise architecture in financial institutions, retail, government, utilities, etc. He is founding member and director of the Data Management Association, managing partner of Envision. And in 2018, he started developing the Bayern Information Architecture and became responsible for the Bayern Architecture Repository. So welcome, Patrick. Glad you can join us today. Our second speaker today will be Marine Cruel, who is low, uh, low code architect and architecture trainer at the Cap Gemini Academy, with over 10 years of experience as a solution architect. As an architect, Marine embeds the use of low code and cloud technologies into the enterprise architecture, sets the constraints for successfully scaling low code and microservices in organizations, and guides agile low code development teams by applying Archimate, Togaf, and Demo. As a trainer and coach, Marine guides developers, business analysts, and architects in their journey to become an experienced agile architect. So a warm welcome from the open group, please, to Patrick Durdy and Marine Cruel. Over to you, gentlemen. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Um, I'm going to, um, to share my screen first to show something. So um, I'll share. Voila. Going in presentation modus. So my name is Patrick Derde, and I'm the lead architect of uh, the Banking Industry Architecture Network. And it is in this role that I want to be a witness of uh, the uh, the power of um, of Archimate. Now. To tell you this, uh, the first thing I want to do is to tell something about what is beyond the banking industry architecture network. We were facing with the problem of the interoperability of the information and our information services. These, this interoperability was, at, uh, was complex, but as a high cost, and we wanted to lower the IT costs and the operational costs. And for that reason, leading banks and suppliers that collaborate together to realize what we call the banking industry architecture uh, network, which is a financial industry reference architecture framework. And in that, in that uh, financial industry reference architecture framework, that's actually a toolbox into which 
we have offered um, service domain architectures, which are actually capabilities, business capability maps, um, business processes called business scenarios, data models, semantic APIs, trainings, and white papers, and all to realize and to architect an agile digital bank. All the information can be found on the on the website of beyond.org and is uh, free for use. And where Beyond and the Open Group are in common, it is in their vision and their mission of realizing this boundless information flow um, and with open systems for interoperability. Well, these open systems for interoperability allows us that we can exchange our information and information services uh, between the banks and between the applications in a very smooth way. And for that reason, uh, the BION organization that align with the way of thinking of uh, TOGAF, but also the way of writing of Archimate. And BION did, first of all, develop a meta model, which is expressed is in the Archimate language. And the language is expressed especially uh, interesting because it is a language that is that enables us high level modeling within the domain but also between the domains and it allows us different visualizations and analysis and most important for us was the easy linkage to other related standards such as uh, uml and the object management group now on this diagram you see how we did express our meta model in the UML language. And when you compare it to when expressing it in the Archimate language, then you see with eyes closed how much more expressive our meta model was without showing any context, simply showing the shapes of the, of the concepts. Someone who knows the Archimate language knows immediately the full context of, um, of the, of the Archimate uh, model. So this, um, this language, I can show you this uh, in real practice by going to the website of uh, Beyond. Going to the website of Beyond where we see that we express our, our, um, our language, our model into the Archimate language by using the capabilities and by using the capabilities, each of these capabilities, uh, this can be, these are more articulated into, into uh, the, the business architecture elements. And I show you this. We have a service domain called consumer loan, and we see which business architecture elements are articulating it. And we can easily link to a UML for showing the data model, but even more, we can easily link to the semantic API representation into the different uh, into the different REST formats or whatever. So really powerful uh, instrument is this um, is this Archimate, as you see, very easily linked to other languages. And from the perspective of visualizing and the perspective of making analysis, well. It can be used for creating all types of uh, visuals for CEOs, business architects, chief architects, all need their own uh, representations, but everything is linked to this Archimate language and the use of it and realizing it in, uh, in, real, uh, in real repositories. And that's actually uh, what I want to share with you, the power of Archimate in the banking uh, industry. So I want to give the word now to uh, my colleague, Maureen. Yes, thank you, Patrick, for this insightful presentation. And thank you, Steve, for the introductions. Just waiting until the screen gets back to presentation. Ah, thanks. So, um, as Steve said, I'm an, uh, an architect mainly involved in, uh, in low-code projects and as the nature of low-code is, uh, is really close to the business, um, I'm also often involved in, uh, in agile projects. 
and often I, uh, I I run into architects uh, that that find it difficult to to find their way in these agile projects because uh, from architecture we tend to uh, deliver very strict and detailed uh, models, while uh, Scrum teams often want to neglect all the architecture uh, and the models that are there and just want to do their own thing and work with user stories. Um, so I have a really nice example of how we uh, combine these agile teams and also some architecture modeling at PostNL, the, the Dutch post. Um, can I now go to the next slide? Ah, it's like this. I found it. So what we uh, uh, do currently at uh, PostNL is uh, uh, we work with an, uh, a Scrum team, an Agile team, and we're actually replacing one of the core uh, planning systems with a, a low-code platform that is focused on uh, backend development. And what you uh, see below is an Archimate picture. Uh, maybe you cannot read it all, that's not important for now, but what you see at the top of this picture is actually the business processes and the different actors that are involved. In this case, it's the the process of um, uh, of the leave. Uh, of course, the leave is important when you start planning uh, people for work. Uh, and below, you see the si different systems that are uh, involved. And actually, at the far bottom is the core uh, planning system we're currently replacing. While uh, on the left and on the right, you see some existing applications in uh, in SAP. And I think it's a really nice picture because on one hand, uh, it's really linked to the business and their processes. It's also linked to actually the epics and the features that are defined also for this uh, project. Uh, because the, the different services that you see are actually the features uh, in, in the, uh, that are guiding the development. And what you also see is, of course, the important interfaces that we have to deal with as a as a development team. Um, and what's really interesting is that these pictures actually, they work for both the business because they recognize themselves in the uh, processes and the supporting applications. And uh, uh, the, also the developers, they really like these kind of pictures because it help, helps them to get an understanding of the context, but also to guide the development to make sure that the user stories uh, get a bit of focus, that we do not forget important interfaces that are in there. So it really guides the development uh, that's going on in the, the Scrum team. Uh, while still these pictures are understood by uh, the most important stakeholders. And in a sense, you can also say from a TOGAF perspective that we're working with the different layers that you can uh, identify where there's, of course, a more strategic direction, uh, uh, which is then detailed into the capability architectures or maybe even the different sprints that we have. And in a sense, these pictures really guide the, 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 the quarterly planning that we do. Uh, and actually, there's one thing I want to add to the picture on the right, because what you really notice that there is also a feedback loop coming from the development team towards the architecture embodiment. And I think that's really important in an agile setting that it's not just top-down architecture, but that there's really a space for the development teams to come with new ideas, to, uh, um, to bring in uh, new ideas also on the architecture. So there's really a feedback loop going on on the, on the lower levels of this architecture. And I also can imagine feedback loops on the, low, on the higher levels in architecture. So um, yeah, that's just an example from uh, the Dutch post where we apply Archimate in an agile context or actually even skilled agile context. And I think an interesting example of how you can, uh, can apply this. So thanks Steve for now, I think back to you. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, that 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 was great stuff, and uh, you've 
finished with plenty of time for questions, which isn't always the case in, on these occasions. So uh, thank you for that. So uh, if we can, um, Patrick, if you're able to join us on video again, we do have some questions coming in from, from the attendees. Um, and uh, one I just want to uh, to start with with you, Maureen, perhaps. Can you can you explain a little more about low code? How, how would you explain what low code is? Oh, I'm. I don't think we can hear you, Marine. Yeah, sorry. There you I go. just. There I you just go. noticed. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was just saying we have ten minutes. I think I can. I can talk for hours on this subject. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in a nutshell, low code is uh, is really uh, the the new way of of software engineering. I would say. Uh, it's more visual uh, based, it's more model based. And I think that's also the interesting part also for uh, uh, for architects that uh, you have to find a way to deal with these different models that arise because a lot of low code is based on models or model okay. driven development. Um, which of course speeds up the development, but also uh, makes it a bit more, restrict bit more restrictive. And it's something you really have to uh, think about and take into account when you try to model the architecture. Right. Thank you. Um, that, that's helpful. So Patrick, um, questions come in here. Uh, are there any Bayern models available in Archimate format that, oh, it's just disappeared off my screen. Uh, are there any Bayern models available in Archimate format that can be uploaded to an Archimate tool? Yeah, um, that is also one of the of the strong parts of the Archimate language that is, it has developed an, an Archimate exchange format, which means that uh, we as Bion and for our members, um, we have chosen for Archimate because we are able to use the exchange format to uh, exchange the, um, the, the BEYOND models from our repository to the repository of, uh, of the members. So, and uh, the pictures are, next, are, are nicely kept, so uh, people are very happy with it that they can uh, import the, uh, the Archimate models via the Archimate exchange format. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I've always I've always thought that that um, exchange file format is a is is a really great um, a really useful tool for uh, for architects and others others using uh, the the Archimate modeling language. It uh, it really makes the uh, the use of it pretty tool agnostic as long as the uh, the the tools are up to it, of course. So. Um, Okay, there's a there's a um, a comment followed by a question. The UML uh, versus Archimate diagram is striking in highlighting the advantages of Archimate, but how can we justify visualizations that cover far more than a normal single screen or paper page? Uh, I've just found the example set up new card for card application in the BN reference model. Is that way too much detail to enable clear understanding? Maybe that's for you, Patrick, but certainly yeah, the second part. Um, yeah. when, uh, not, not sure which, um, which part you're talking about. Are you talking about an, what we call a service domain and how the service domain is expressed in the Archimate language? It's hard to say. Um, there's a specific reference uh, from the person asking the question to the uh, set up new card for card application oh, in the okay, okay. reference model. Yeah, okay. He's referring to he's referring to what we call a business scenario. Yeah. And uh, what we do and Bion is also using a, a, a new way of thinking actually instead of the process driven way of thinking it's a service driven way of think, of of thinking service driven by components and Bion is working in capabilities in capacities to do something we call that a service domain. And service domains are actually offering their services in the card in the card payment business in mm -hmm. realizing something. And by exchanging this information or these services, we, after all, 
real nice uh, business service, but that's expressed in the in the business scenarios. And the business scenarios, why not a BPMN, for example? Because the business scenarios are also focusing on this exchange of information and information services. So is it too detailed? No, it is not part of the standard of BEYOND, but it is part of, it's an example of a business process to do such a things. And in my opinion, it's still real high level. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you, Patrick. Okay. Um, maybe I can uh, point this one at, at you, Maureen. Um, Archimate, it, it, there's two questions that follow a very, it's really the same question, but uh, Archimate is a lean and efficient modeling tool for IT folks, but how do you educate business stakeholders to share with them uh, directly Archimate models? For them, it may be less natural. Uh, a similar question, I find executives don't like looking at boxes and lines. Uh, do you have any suggestions for making presentations to executives that are more visually appealing? Yeah. Well, I, first, I totally recognize this. So let's be clear on that. Uh, and in a sense, of course, it's good because Archimate is really detailed and specific. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, Archimate actually also provides the solution, I think, to this issue is to work with, with views or viewpoints um, and then still, I think sometimes we're a bit hesitating to bring these models to the, uh, to the business or to the stakeholders. Well, if you explain them what a process is and how a process model looks like, I noticed a lot of people naturally, uh, uh, understand it. They may not understand fully the difference between a flow and a trigger or something else. Uh, but with just simple explanation, you can really easily talk them through, I, I think. And of course, the, there's always the thing that you don't need to show all the details. So from the, the, the picture that I showed to the business, I only take the process and the applications that are involved and I leave out the interfaces and the services and everything else to make it understandable. Uh, but to right. work with with you in a smart way, I think it can be the solution. And and for other audience, you really need to grab PowerPoint. Or uh, 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 nowadays, you go to uh, uh, Instagram if you want to talk to your stakeholders. Right? Uh, other way of right. visualizing uh, might be needed. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's lots of questions coming in. Let's see. There's. Um... Uh, I saw one that was just right for you, Patrick, uh, um, which was, yes, does Archimate have anything that is domain specific, for example, for banking or retail? Uh, Archimate itself has nothing that is domain specific for, uh, for, um, for banking or retail, but you can Archimate to create sector reference uh, architectures, of course, eh, such as uh, the one that I showed you, the beyond reference architecture, mm -hmm. that's that's one that is expressed in the Archimate language, and that is uh, defining actually uh, the financial industry domains. And the financial industry domains, that are actually the, all these capabilities that, uh, that we are expressing via Archimate. So, yes, there do exist uh, nowadays already a lot of, uh, of examples where, where industry um, where industries have their reference models expressed in the Archimate language. So, right. and uh, Beyond is one of them, the banking industry. Right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, and let's see. Uh, uh, Marine, um, here we are. Um, it's two again, somewhat, somewhat similar. Um, I'll go with the longer one. We're finding in our enterprise that low code opportunities often resist best practice architecture in favor of value as soon as possible. Type coupling and business logic in the UI, for example. Has Marine been able to use Archimate to better describe the long term value of developing low code solutions under more robust architectural practices? Oh, that, that's really, yeah, it's a long question. 
It is. It's a question I, I I would I would really like to think about, but right. maybe maybe to give give a, a, a brief answer and maybe uh, maybe ask uh, Clay to do a follow up with me. Um, right. Yes, I I do recognize that uh, the the longer term value of low code or applying low code is difficult sometimes to express. Um, and yes, there are definitely di differences also, I think, between a low-code architecture and, and uh, more high-code architecture, where in low-code, I would definitely advise not to detail too much uh, and leave it really up to the platform to, to detail the malls uh, where it's needed. Um, and yes, that often or sometimes actually conflicts with the longer-term value. And and still, if you really go back to architecture principles, uh, like uh, making functionality available on both web and mobile, you do can find and make explicit the value of these kind of, of platforms. I've never done it with the Archimate language before, but I'm I'm sure it can be done. So I think it's interesting uh, also for myself to to think about this question a bit longer maybe uh, and yeah. have a nice discussion also on this yeah giving giving Thanks you an for idea the, uh, of, for the question yeah let me to think about over the holidays huh so yeah, uh, sure yes yeah, yeah, so maybe uh, maybe uh, Claire who asked the question can can follow up there so we uh, we are out of time but i i just want to um there are various questions and there's always talk when uh, when Archimate comes up about tools um so uh, here at the open group, we have a set of a, a, a accredited certified architect uh, architecture tools that allow people to um, uh, to embrace the modeling, uh, the Archimate modeling language um, and uh, different levels of functionality, etc. But what the one direct question asked here, um, what tools are you guys using? What, your, what are your go to tools? Is that a question to, yes. to, to us? Yeah, yeah. Um, we from uh, from beyond perspective, actually, um, we are using the Business Design Enterprise Studio tool because this tool allows to um, to uh, yeah, to model Archimate and also to model uh, these in this other language and easily link them to each other. And uh, when we are publishing our content, then actually. For testing purposes, I'm using the Archie tool. What right. am I doing? I'm uh, exporting in the in the Archimate Exchange format, and I'm testing if it is working in the Archie tool. So that's right. uh, that are the two tools yeah. that I'm using. Okay, Marine, anything to you can yeah, no, well, to on tools? Yeah, well, I, I I often advise the people that start with Archimate actually to use Archie. I think it's a it's a really good tool and easy to use. It supports the the language. I think that maybe even the best. So to start, it it's really easy to start. Just download and go. Once you come into a more corporate environment, you often will need a tool with some repository behind it like Sparks, Enterprise Architect, like Aris, like, well, I don't know which tools are there. I, I've used them all probably. Um, it really depends on what you what you really uh, want. But if you if you go to a bigger environment, you should definitely have some repository or, or tool that, that supports that. Right. OK. Gentlemen, um, a big thank you. We're going to we're going to leave it there. Um, I'm going to I'm going to close with it with the last thing I see in the Q and A, which is uh, no questions, uh, yeah. only a lot of appreciation for this presentation and the time and effort shared by Steve, Patrick, and Marine. So forget about my time, but uh, gentlemen, thank you for the effort you've made on on this, um, and um, you know you've uh, you've triggered a lot of questions and. Uh, and uh, hopefully, I know shared a lot of uh, insight that will be valuable to people. So thank you very much yep. for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah. Well, yep. thank okay. you. So that concludes uh, Toolkit Tuesday for today. Um, all that remains for me to say is we're taking at this time of year, we're taking a little break, even from Toolkit Tuesday. So uh, rather than uh, two weeks time, we'll revert on Tuesday, January the 18th. 
um, for, will be the next toolkit Tuesday, where the topic will be open agile architecture certification, which is a new uh, certification program just launched by the open group. So in the meantime, thank you again, everyone for joining us today. Um, thank you to Patrick and Maureen for their insights and their time and effort. And um, uh, I wish you all a happy holidays. Stay safe. Um, enjoy this time of year and uh, see you next time on Toolkit Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Bye bye for now.